Welcome to Friday Q&A for another week. I hope you guys have all been well. Thank you so much for the questions last week. And as always, thank you for your continued input and feedback with all the videos we do. If you've got questions for next week, you can ask me absolutely anything. Just leave a comment under the video here. Let's get into this week's questions. This question pops up quite often either online or when I'm talking to people who want to know more about the axe effects and it's if you're running a bunch of effects like Strymon pedals and you know whatever else it is that you're into can all of that be replaced by an axe effects and the answer is definitely yes I've done a few videos even with the AX8 uh, just copying some of the tones from like the timeline and the new axe effects 3 has these incredible cloud reverb algorithms which sound a lot like the Big Sky or you know the Meris Mercury 7. So if you're looking for like one-to-one -one replacements, they're not gonna sound exactly the same, but I'm pretty confident you could go and tweak them and really get them honed in. However, there is a lot to be said about the way certain pedals sound. You might not wanna sell all of your pedals, you know, there's a patch on your timeline that you just can't live without, maybe you don't sell it because that's just kind of the fun about pedals. You know, you can tweak a few knobs and really quickly get an inspiring sound. I know there's pedals that I have like my fuzzes and you know, I've got an Electro Harmonics Pog, even the Eventide H9. Uh, there's just certain sounds in there that like, I'm pretty sure I could duplicate them and I've got really close, but at the same time, I can't be bothered, I just wanna connect a couple of cables and go. I wanna show you guys uh, the little setup that I've got next to my desk, including, basically this is my workflow. Like, if I wanna be inspired, if I wanna make music, if I wanna do demos, this is how I've got it set up. It's kinda of like a mini studio tour for you guys. So, uh, yeah, anyway, to answer the question before I do that, uh, it's really up to you. I would say you're probably gonna to wanna to keep a couple of pedals. I know I did, but I did sell a lot of stuff when I got my first Axe Effects, and I still flip stuff fairly often because often I'll get it and be like, you know what, I can do this with the ax, but let's have a look at how I've got my gear set up anyway. So here is the rack. This is right to my right. When I'm sitting working at the computer, I've got the Axe FX3 sitting on top in, I think it's an SKB three unit case. And then I've got this sort of tour style rack that I bought secondhand off a buddy of mine recently. And this is the cool part about it because ta-da. I've got a rack drawer with a bunch of different pedals on it. You can see here a couple of Eventides, there's an H9 and a Rose. I've got a demo of the Rose coming out on Monday. There's a few drives, I've got my Anarchy Audio Workhorse, there's the Rev G3 which sounds awesome. It's kind of obscured here but uh, there's a fuel tank, a couple of Boss Twin pedals, still love those things and I've got my FC6 board down here. So the nice thing about the way I've got this set up is I've just basically got a little patch panel here. You can see I've got, I talked about power conditioners last week. I do have this Furman. It's not really a power conditioner. It's just a convenient on off switch for running all this kind of stuff. So uh, basically these are attached to, I think it's output and input four on my Axe FX3. So if I wanted to run a loop and at the moment I've got these pedals patched in. Let's see, what am I doing? There we go, that's off. Uh, I'll just play a loop through it. So I'm gonna do stuff like that and basically play around with the knobs because I find that these pedals always provide me with inspiring sounds. And if I find a sound I really like, then I can dive into this guy and program it in. You can do basically anything with the Axe FX3. Uh, I mostly use it for my straight up 
amp sounds because they're really, really easy to get going. And all the just stock delays, reverbs, time based effects sound amazing. And then if I want weird stuff, this is normally where I go. Or, you know, I want to try to copy my analog drive that I used to use. Or there is definitely something to be said about the tactile interface, about just grabbing a loop, you know, playing around with it until you get something really cool. And I get a lot of musical inspiration that way. And then the way this is hooked up, I've actually just got this little, let's see if we can see it in here. It's like a $12, $13 spit of converter probably cannot see that in there there we go uh, because my apollo twin here only takes optical in the axe effects has spit of out so it's an optical to spit of converter you can see there's a little uh mac mini in there running everything this is an adat which i'm not using at the moment there's my adam a7 monitors I've got axe edit up at the moment and a cup of coffee which is well and truly consumed so yeah, I do still like running pedals. Oh, and down here, this is a really cool thing. I've got my 250, my Tri-Axis, and my Super Lead preamp. I need to put my MP1 in here, and I've got the load box. So anytime I want to fire the rack up and run it with the axe effects, all the pedals, it's all integrated. Uh, you know, I'm just about trying to get inspiring epic tones whenever I can and I find that 95% of the time this guy does it but the other 5% I can plug into this stuff and I've got some amps over here my god I've got so much gear it's just utterly ridiculous isn't it following on from that Mark Pritchard asked me a question uh, should you sell your 6i6 when your Axe FX3 arrives really depends on what you want to do with it if you just want to record guitar and make guitar music you can probably just use the Axe FX3. I've been using it like that for quite a while. Although, because I do a lot of demos and I do a lot of recording of cabs and I do a lot of stuff where I need to record my voice and take a screen capture, I found that my workflow is a little bit easier using the Apollo as my main interface. And then, you know, as I showed just before, I've got a Spitif to Toslink converter going from my Axe FX3 to the Apollo. I know the big rack Apollos have Spitif, so you wouldn't need to use the converter and I'm pretty sure the 6i6 has spit if so yeah I mean if you dig in the 6i6 you may as well just go with it uh, and especially if you wanted to do stuff like tutorials or you wanted to record vocals or you know acoustic instruments then the 6i6 does have mic preamps which are going to be great for that kind of thing so yeah if it ain't broke don't fix it but if you do want to try just the USB with the Axe FX3 uh, it is really handy it makes reamping really really easy too. Getting rid of that blanket sound when you're using your Axe FX with a Matrix power amp and a Mission speaker. I'm assuming you're using a full range speaker, uh, in which case make sure you've got your cab sims turned on, make sure you've got your power amp sims turned on. And if it still sucks and you've done lots of tweaking with the amp, if it is a full range speaker, then it's going to be the IR that you're using. So spend some time going and choosing the right IR for the style of music that you want to play. I did a five minute tones video a little while back talking about how I use the looper to select IRs and I mean I don't really do that that often anymore because I've done that test and I've found a handful of IRs which work for most of the styles that I want but a lot of the time if I do get stuck on a system where my go-to IRs aren't working that's often my first port of call I'll just go through and I'll play around with a couple of different IRs until I get rid of that. You know, you might find that the IR you're using is just simply too dark and has too much low frequency content. So rather than going in and spending hours tweaking the amp and tweaking EQ, just play around with some different impulses. If it is a guitar cab that you're using, then that is gonna be a totally different matter. Uh, did a video earlier in the week talking about you know like running uh, your axe effects with cab sims on into a traditional guitar cab that's going to make it sound really muffled so i imagine it is either one of those scenarios this is a really good question if i wasn't using a modeler what rig would i go with live let's turn around here this guy the dsl 50 is probably my favorite marshall of all time so if i was doing a gig where i needed to cover a few different styles of rock music, you know, good clean sound, good dirty sound. I'd take a couple of pedals and chuck it into that guy. If I was strictly doing a ragdoll gig, well, my rig before I went with a modeler was this uh, dual rectifier Rev G. I actually used to run this and this amp in like a dual mono setup, which was ridiculous. But this particular amp, I'd probably go with the H9 
in the loop. And if you can see it back here, the Anarchy Audio workhorse boosting this because this is a really flubby amp. And uh, that's basically my back to zero rig. So that was my old rig uh, and this cab, uh, which now has four different speakers in it. So that's pretty cool. But I think my other alternative nowadays would be this, now that I've finally got a tri-axis, uh, would probably be tri-axis, stereo 250. That's a wicked combo. It really, really pushes some volume. And again, I'd probably use an H9. Uh, or if not the H9, I'd probably just use the older DD20 or I just got the Rose. So maybe that if I just want to delay, but uh, I do need some modulation effects. So maybe the H9 in like pre-post with the tri-axis, that would probably destroy everything else. And I would use a wah with that. That would be like the only external pedal I would use. I really should do a full video about this because I need to let you guys know what these things actually sound like. And I reckon that would be a pretty fun experiment. I'm in the process of making like an all pedal board rig at the moment as well, just to do some videos with. So that's another one, hopefully to look forward to when I get around to doing it. Reasons for upgrading from an Axe FX2 to an Axe FX3. I feel like this is a video that I should make that's gonna be a long form video and do some comparisons. But at the moment, I would say the main three things are the sheer flexibility. Uh, you've got more ins and outs, you've got way more processing power, and you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. You can run multiple guitars through it. You can run multiple guitars and bass and keyboards. There's enough firepower to do that in there. So the actual feature set is definitely a plus. But the second reason, if you're just a guitar player, and yeah, you only use a couple of blocks, I just still think the detail in the amps and what they've got with the latest firmware, it's, it's really starting to move on from where the Axe FX2 left off. Uh, the last update for the Axe FX2, the Ares firmware, sounds great. Uh, but I think now with firmware 5 and also the stuff in the amp block, it just makes getting a sound that's usable so much quicker. The Axe FX Ultra still sounds amazing, but I find that when I went from an Ultra to an AX8, I spent so much less time tweaking my amp sounds. And I find that going from my AX8, which, you know, running the same stuff as the Axe FX2, to the Axe FX3, I spend even less time. It's just silly how good it can sound with a minimum amount of tweaking. Plus, you've got thousands of cabs in there, plus all the effects, uh, you know, they're probably running at a higher oversampling rate and things like that. So if you're just in it for the tones, I think it's, I, don't, I do think it sounds better, I have to say, and it feels really good as well. And finally, it's gonna be supported for a while. And furthermore, if you didn't wanna get a three, uh, the FM3 is running the same algorithms and the same effects, so that might be a good one to go for. It really comes down to your use case, but uh, it does sound pretty amazing, but I am gonna get around to doing a video on the three versus the two and the AX8 at some point soon. Last week, somebody asked about upcoming gigs. Uh, a few of you have asked, when is there gonna be some new ragdoll music? And I can actually confidently say very soon because we are just settling on the final mix for the first single. So that will hopefully go off to mastering at some point in the next couple of days. And then that will go off to distro. And hopefully at some point in the next month, you guys can hear some of what we've all been working for. The mixes are sounding huge and slamming and, you know, yeah, yada, yada. It's the best thing we've ever done. Uh, I'm just excited to put some new music out. It's, um, it still sounds like Ragdoll, but it's a little bit different. And, you know, it's uh, as with all the stuff we always do, I feel like it's an evolution and it really fits with where we're at now as musos and people and as a band. So I'm sure if you like our old stuff, you're really going to dig the new stuff. And uh, if you thought the old stuff was shite, hopefully you'll like the new stuff. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in this week. As always, if you want to hear your questions answered, just leave them in the comments below and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.